Here is the story of Prince Vlad III, better known as Dracula. Vlad III was born in 1431 in the walled city of Zigishawara. This feudal city is in the heart of Transylvania. It was built after the terrifying Tatar invasion of 1241 to 1242. This is the house where Vlad III was born. In this room, you can see frescoes of the 15th century. We recognize his father, Vlad II Dracul, meaning Vlad II the Dragon. This is why Vlad III got his nickname, Draculia, the Little Dragon. In 1442, to secure the peace treaty with the Turks, the young prince Vlad III, who was 11, was sent to Adrianople as Sultan Marat II's hostage. There, he discovered impalement, which was very popular in the Ottoman Empire. Five years later, in November 1447, his father, Vlad Dracul II, was brutally murdered by nobles and Saxon merchants in the marshes of Baltany. In 1448, Vlad III was 17. He was finally freed by the Sultan and returned to Transylvania, determined to avenge his father and brother who died tortured in Tarkovice. In 1453, Sultan Mehmet II entered Constantinople. It was the fall of the Byzantine Empire. Joan Corvin the regent of Hungary, gave an army to Prince Vlad III to defend the southern Carpathians against the Turks. But Vlad III took this opportunity to overtake the throne of Wallachia by killing Prince Vladislav in a battle. Vlad III then decided to eliminate all the nobles who could challenge him. On Easter Sunday, 1457, he arrested all the noble families that he had invited to a big party at his court. He killed some by impaling them and used others as slaves, forcing them to build a fortress on the ruins of an ancient outpost. This is the steep Ponari fortress overlooking the Arges River on the southern flank of the Carpathians. The construction was to last for months and many nobles were to die of exhaustion. He then impaled hundreds of thousands of men, and especially Saxon merchants of Basov and Sibiu, and also the Turkish prisoners. Vlad III became Vlad Tepes, meaning the Impaler. Throughout the country, merchants distributed little prints representing Vlad Tepes in the process of pleading them. Here are edicts signed by Vlad Tepes, dating from that era. In 1462, Vlad Tepes felt stronger and decided to break his alliance with the Turks. When emissaries came to collect tribute from the Sultan Mehmet II, Vlad Tepes ordered them to remove their turbans to salute him. When they refused, he nailed their turbans to their heads and returned them to their masters. Mehmet II, who was furious, sent his army and went after Vlad Tepes up to his Ponari fortress. The siege was terrible. The beloved wife of Vlad Tepes, who wanted to escape, fell to her death from the top of the cliff into the Arges River. Vlad Tepes, mad with grief, managed, however, to escape Ponari's siege and return to Transylvania to meet the Hungarian king Matthias Corvin, who was Joan Corvin's son. But because of his excesses, the king did not trust him and kept him prisoner in the Corvin castle for 12 years. In 1476, Vlad Tepes was again recognized as the Prince of Wallachia, as the country needed this excellent strategist and bloodthirsty warrior to defend its borders against the multiplicity of enemies. 
but he died beheaded in Bucharest in a battle against the Turks in December 1476. In 1897, the Irish writer Bram Stoker published the novel Dracula. It tells the story of a bloodthirsty vampire who lives in a castle in the Carpathians. This is the Bran Castle, located in the county of Brasov, on the northern slopes of the Carpathians. Bram Stoker's Dracula is directly inspired by the historical figure of Vlad Tepes Draculia as it was represented on the Saxon merchant's little prince eating human flesh. But the literary character is based on the Strigois, these immortal ghosts of Romanian mythology emerging from graves to come and drink the blood of the living. From these two bloody sources was born the character of Dracula the vampire whose tragic shadow has invaded our collective mind.